Now, domestic violence continues to be an issue that plagues many men and women across the world, and of course here in Trinidad and Tobago. And so we're going to be talking about a domestic violence safety plan with Mrs. Rhonda Thompson-Benjamin, who is a counseling psychologist at Enrich the Life Limited. Rhonda, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Now. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Now, before we get into the safety plan, let's just provide some context in terms of what exactly is domestic violence. Domestic violence really is also called domestic abuse. So it's any pattern in, that you find in any particular relationship in the household. So it can be physical, sexual, emotional, uh, psychological um, that is used to allow one person to gain or maintain power over someone um, in the same household. Yeah. And of course, this someone can either be men or women, right? Because I think there's also the understanding. Some people may think there's yeah. the understanding that men, uh, mm -hmm. they are not victims, but they can fall victim as well, correct? Definitely. So data from the domestic, um, the National Domestic Hotline says that 20% of the reports came from men. So we have more and more men coming forward. But of course, we know this has been uh, a long going issue. But I'm happy to, to say that men have been coming forward and making these reports. Yeah. As we consider safety uh, during a domestic violence incident, or even in a relationship where domestic violence is present, um, what sort of tips can you give someone? Because I know the first thing that people will say is leave, but sometimes it's so difficult to leave. And so before you prepare to leave or, or before you leave, how do you prepare or cope while you're in that situation? Yeah, so it's very important to prepare. Now, some persons are very eager to leave the relationship. However, remember domestic violence is a pattern of abuse. So it's important that there are things that are put in place to ensure your safety. Safety is your number one priority. So you would, if you want to decide to leave, it's important for you to identify where am I going to leave? Where, what is the safest place in my home that I can make my escape? So is it the front door? Is it the back door? Is it through a window in my room that I would not get hurt? Where am I going to leave my keys? How can I access these things that are so important um, easily? Who can I tell? Um, can I tell my mother? Can I tell my sister? Can I tell a neighbor? So in, in the case of an incident, they can call the police. Um, what is a code that I can come up with in my household? If there is one person that is particularly violent or abusive in the home, what is a word that I'm going to use with my children? So it, will it be apples? Will it be grapes? So that everybody knows this is the time to initiate the, the escape plan. And of yeah. course, you need you need to teach your kids um, these steps. So it's very, very important um, that you plan. So you need to have um, leave money. So if you have um, maybe uh, whatever you need to escape, if you have a hundred dollars ticket somewhere that you're partner may not be able to access it um get an extra set of keys if you can if you can leave your home and leave it with a neighbor so that you would be able to access these items when you need to leave yeah now one of the things i'm hearing that you're saying is that that person that you need to contact but in many cases people have nowhere to turn to or nowhere to run to in that situation how can they ensure that when it's time to escape they have somewhere to go so it's very important for us to become educated on where we can go, where we can access services. So in Tobago, we have the Gender-Based Violence Unit, and that number is 639-1812, um, extension 14015. So it's very, very important that you go, you make a report. And now many persons may say, but why do I have to make a report? They are not going to do anything. They do something. And you can also access uh, a protection order. So this person will be mandated legally to stay away from you. And although it may not work, in some cases it does. So you have to do everything that is necessary. You can also um, contact the Division of Health, Wellness, and Social Protection. And their counseling hotline is 683-8341. And you would be able to get information. You would have access to the resources that are necessary for your safety. Yeah. So even though you do not have 
friends or family members, um, there is help in our various institutions and organizations. Yeah. Rhonda, you know, as a counseling psychologist, I wanted to get your thoughts on this because what we've been discussing thus far is what the victim has to do to protect themselves and not necessarily mm -hmm. what the perpetrator has to do or even be fearful of the consequences with doing something like that. Is there a way to change yeah. this dynamic where the victim always has to be running and securing themselves rather than the, the issue falling on the shoulders of the perpetrator for doing something that is wrong? Yeah. So in many cases, we tend to blame the victim, but we also know that the perpetrator is responsible um, wholly and solely because of this abuse. So it's important for the perpetrator to access counseling, right. see what resources are out there, because of course there is a problem that you have to resolve. And many times when the perpetrators come to access these services, we realize that there is some underlying issue that they have to work through. They would have experienced trauma in the past and they would not have dealt with it. So it's important for the perpetrator to understand that there are consequences to these behaviors. No excuses, but there are certain reasons why persons lash out at others, why persons want to gain this control. So think about the legal aspects of it. You can be um, become imprisoned. Um, you know, you could end up losing the, the same family that you want to control. Um, and we, we don't want that. We want you to access services. You yeah. need help. And it's okay to admit that you need help. Yeah. Now, as we also talk about the perpetrator, you mentioned that they can get that protection order, or the victim, rather, can get that protection order. Um, of course, we've seen situations where the protection order didn't help in certain instances, but I also wanted mm -hmm. to touch on the fact of safety at the workplace, because sometimes not only do they go to your homes, but they also come to your workplace as well. So how would a victim protect themselves while they're at work? I mean, how will they protect their children who are at school? Because we know sometimes the perpetrators will go and they have that they start somewhat of a custody battle so then how can the victim be safe at work and then how can they keep their children safe and protect their children as well okay so it's very important i know um domestic violence it's a sensitive issue but it's very important that you let somebody at work know even if it's the security your boss let them know that this person is not permitted um near you because they may just come into the workplace and say i, I came to check my husband or i came to check my wife and they can be let into the building so allowing someone at your workplace to know that um there is this issue that is happening and they are not permitted near you um that is essential um, in terms of conducting business, going to the grocery, um, in the relationship, if you have been going to a particular supermarket at a particular time, you may want to revisit that. You may want to go at a time where this person will not suspect that you would be there. Um, it's also important to scan your environment when you are leaving work. Look at um, the cars that are going by. Um, look outside of the door before you exit. In terms of your children, let the principal or the teacher know so they can be able to be vigilant in terms of um, allowing this person onto the school, school compound and having access to the children. So, of course, um, letting the principal know the persons that will be taking your children from school is also essential. Yeah. Now, when this person, so for example, if there's a situation where there's a co-worker who comes to you with some issues, um, maybe that person is being abused at home, whether it's psychological, physical, that sort of thing, do you take it upon yourself to make a report or how do you know at what point to step in to render assistance or should you render assistance if the person did not ask? Okay, so in many cases, um, so again, domestic violence is a very sensitive issue. So you need to be very careful in terms of how you intervene. However, um, it's important for that person who would have confided in you to know that they have your support. Let them know that there are various resources available for them to seek help. So, of course, if you see this person coming near to this person or you feel as though they are in immediate danger, you would want to make a report. Yes. But the most important thing is allowing this person to know that they have your support. That is important because 
most times persons feels that persons feel that they can't leave because they do not have the support of others. The um, perpetrator would have isolated them from others. So helping them to understand that they have support is very, very important. Yeah. Now, in most instances, the person will not be able to leave right now. They have children or other ties to the perpetrator. Um, is there something as a safe space at home where they can escape if, uh, if violence erupts or, you know, if it is they need to take a few moments for themselves? Is there a way for them to be still safe in such an environment? Yes. So it's very important that if an argument ensues, it's important for you to uh, use your judgment and your intuition. So if the situation is very serious, if you could give the perpetrator something to calm down in that moment before you make your escape and it does not cause injury to yourself or others around you, do that because you want to be safe. Um, you know, try to stay away from places such as the bathroom where you could be seriously injured or in the kitchen where there may, there may be knives. You really, really want to stay away from those areas if um, you are having an argument. Also, um, if you hear suspicious noises um, in the house, somebody, the perpetrator may be coming in, um, mm -hmm. you could also... Uh, shout out to our neighbor or send a text. Remember that word that we, we spoke about, that emotion, um, yes. emergency code word? Um, let your neighbor know that something is happening so that they can call the police. Yeah. And when you're ready, when you're ready to make that move, are there particular items that you should take with you uh, just to ensure that you can get back on your feet as you learn to, you know, move on with your life? Yes. So while preparing to leave, it's very important for you to have copies of various mm -hmm. documents um, in different places. So you may want to give it to a neighbor or family member. Um, again, copy of your keys, passports, vaccination cards for you and your children mm -hmm. so that you don't have to go over this whole process. Um, because many times the perpetrator would keep these documents so they keep you tied to the relationship. So have copies of this document, even if you cannot have the physical copy, have those copies. Um, also, you want to have any school cards, um, any reports, any medical documents. Um, you may want to have your um, bank cards. Those things are very, very necessary um, in terms of planning to escape an abusive situation. Yeah. And finally, Rhonda, how do you heal from this? What sort of tips can you give people who are listening right now to help them heal? Maybe they are still at home. Maybe they have left the home and they're looking now to see how they can help and how they can move on. What kind of tips can you give them yeah. to help them cope with that situation? Yeah, it's, it's a very, very difficult situation to cope with. And many times persons find themselves feeling isolated. This is the only person that I knew. This is the person that told me that, um, you know, I would not have any life after you leave. So it's important for you to be uh, very, you need to validate yourself. You would have made a big move if you would have left that relationship. And even if you are still there, Remember that you can find the services, even if you don't um, find strength in yourself, reach out to an organization for counseling so that they can help you go through a safety plan that would help you to become more confident. So I would let you know, um, contact persons who care about you, reach out, um, identify at least two persons that you can call and even um, access counseling so that you would receive the support that you rightfully deserve. Yeah. Well, Rhonda, with that, let me thank you so much for joining us on the Now Morning Show and all the tips that you shared. I know that they will be useful to someone who is listening right now. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me again. Of course. And that was Mrs. Rhonda Thompson-Benjamin, a counseling psychologist at Enrich Life Limited, just telling us how to be safe in the event of a domestic violence uh, incident. You're on the Now Morning Show, and up next, we are going to be taking your phone calls. So please stand by. Remember, our numbers are 622-4010 when we come back.